right daily review let's see what happened today um bad news as you can see we were not able to go past this imbalance which means we will still have consolidation <laughs> um to be honest with the news i expected price to finally go past these levels and i'm just realizing they are not properly set because this needs to go here and this needs to go here now correct we're staying inside this imbalance between this order block and this order block which we never tested to be honest so we are in dealing in this range and we are exactly at equilibrium classic after a move it can consolidate at equilibrium i don't know which one uh, which direction they will take but we will see uh, let's analyze euro of course euro doing the same thing managed to go above previous days i and dixie actually fa uh, gbp failed to do that eating again the bcce here which is a balanced price range um if we can go and close above this one oh boy i'm gonna go for this one for sure I'm, ah i hate when i talk like this not for sure but highly probable uh it's probable that it does that and yeah uh, only supporting smt that i can see on the daily not even using swings just using previous days uh, uh highs and lows it's this one this went higher this went lower other than that i don't really have much much to say we are stuck dropping into the h1 we can see how the london session was a mess was choppy on this time frame but on the lower time frames it was it, it was okay it was tradable to be honest if you use smt and correlated smt with gbp you can do a lot um i personally don't like it that much because i much prefer uh, the trades that i much prefer are the ones that i took today which i will show later and it was a new row basically down here and i took partials here 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 and then they basically ended up doing nothing um gbp is pretty much the same stuff the common theme is there is an order block in both of them there is an uh, there is a swing low and this order block is coupled with an imbalance and this is where we have this reaction very very cool but let's go deeper into it and the reason why i'm showing these three charts like this and not going into one specifically it's because i want to show the correlation between them and the smts where they happened um, it makes sense to me that they happen at these levels because if it's called smt it should be smart money tool or smart money technique then we know that potentially smart money will be buying at the levels we've been taught so why would it shouldn't we look in uh, for smt at those specific levels it's beyond me but i can i can understand how sometimes smt out of the blue can actually cause reversals so fair enough um, i'm gonna immediately go into the m5 because i want to show the power of the smts in here and let's analyze the london session which was choppy yes but tradable in the sense of we went higher in here and this going higher actually went filling this imbalance in here and it used the mean threshold of this order block and this old imbalance at the same time dixie was going into the consequent encroachment of his daily cb it hit that once went again started trading higher we broke down in here balanced price range we have bc cb this candle opens tests and immediately goes lower but what happens while dixie manages to go higher consolidates and runs for the buy side liquidity euro doesn't do that and creates smt at the 50% or the BC consequent encroachment basically 50% of the uh, of the imbalance of taken from the daily and then we have here a drop SMT comes up 
bullish shorter block, trades in, explodes to the upside, going into a, a completely random level, <laughs> which is the BC high, hits it once, hits it twice, and let's notice what happened here. It did it again, and this SMT here is just showing with Dixie, and this one to this one, you can see how GBP was not able to trade higher, creating equalize. When it when it's this close to liquidity and it wicks and it starts coming back in, many, many times it's gonna go for the other side. In this case, it didn't even go for the other side, but it went for the imbalance cre created in here. And this imbalance was created after we raided the lows, comes back in. When we were in here, we already have uh, bullish SMT for a euro, so euro will bring will uh, will allow also GBP's rally in this case, and it rallies consolidating around the Q1 high SMT. So this range here was tradable uh, with the fact of oh there is SMT this and that. Um, in my opinion, this can be traded this way. As soon as you see the SMT and you see this market breaking down and you have SMT also in here. And you know you are in a range. Uh, but I forget something. No, okay, fine. You can actually use this this candle as a stop entirely, and you just enter at the open of this one. So something like this. Always remember the spread, which we will have to add because we are selling here to 50% or the complete closure. That's a 2R. That's very good. But honestly, I didn't have the balls to sell. Then we have a bounce in here, a bounce in here, comes back up. Notice again, hitting the daily BC high. And the market rolls over ahead of the news, because the news was here. And I'm not going to mark this, because you can see the explosion. But this is the Judas, quick sudden Judas. If you want to be using the 7 a.m., it's fine, because it's going to be here. And from 7, basically, we started trading softer. Or you can use the midnight opening price. And ideally, we've been taught that the best buy in a bullish day, they're going to be below this. So if we put this through, this is below, and we rally higher. Now I'm going to go deeper into each one. This is the H1BC. And something that I found amazing, amazing. Something that I didn't know is... Um, if I take from this high to this low and I do the grade, uh, the swinging of the grade, no, what am I saying? I'm grading the swing from this to this. We have four different levels, okay? Um, if we study this here, 25, which is the premium, we can see how the bodies are perfectly respecting that level. And that's perfect, clean, clean classic algo delivery and these are the times where i believe the algo is real like because it's hard to misprove but when this precision unfolds every single day almost on the daily i mean it's hard not to believe uh, my entry was here and you know what i might as well actually show it um, all right let's see if i can do something like this um yes I took the entry in here, 50 off, 25, 25 remaining, which I trailed. And the reason why I trailed is because on the M5, there was a swing low in here, a swing low in here, we need an imbalance in here. So I said, this one should be safe if, it's go if it wants to go higher. And uh, this was it at my stop here. And when we were here, I trailed it because we broke structure to the upside again. So this order block had to work in order for my trade to pan out. And I, I then moved my take profit to 110 exactly. Market traded, tried, broke down, fair value gap, hits it, comes back in, consolidates, stops me out, just dies. But again, going back into the, for the trade, it's, uh, I have this H1 imbalance. Let's remove this one. I just uh, explained what I was looking at. Inside of this H1 imbalance, we have this M15 imbalance. And from this low, higher, lower. First of all, these three consecutive down candles, that's one other block. And then we have low, higher, lower. 
breaker. So I had the confluence of the breaker, the H1 for value gap, the M15 imbalance, the order block 45 minutes of down candles. I had the BPR in here showing that this potentially was a stop run because he immediately reclaimed it. And the 25% if I take from the consequent encroachment to the low, 50% is here, perfectly hits, bounces. And then in terms of liquidity, I had this one which was untested. We left lots of buy side liquidity in there, up there. Uh, market from here went up here. I was lucky enough to have a partial in here and then another rally and you couldn't do it anymore. Stuck in a range. We can see also on the H1, when we breach the level, we come back immediately, which is not what we want to see. Ideally, we'd like to see some distance, which means we can hit it multiple times. We can break above, spend some time and then come back in and go higher. If you ask me, oh, how did you find this out? Uh, I didn't. I learned this from Tom Dante. You can go on his, on his YouTube channel. I didn't buy his specific his course, but I learned from YouTube alone. Um, as you can see, this one in here, this fractal, which is also what ICT refers to accumulation, manipulation, distribu distribution, it's exactly what happened in here. Big displacement, consolidations, Judas slower manipulation and then distribution. One of my favorites. Um, now we can go in, into GBP. GBP, pretty much the same thing. We have this old imbalance, which I didn't remove because I don't remove those when I think they are in play. Let me have this on the front. Came back in, taking out this low. Now this is how we never hit this level. If we analyze it even more, we can see how we had an imbalance in here from this to this and the market perfectly hit that level. Uh, I don't trust these levels as entries, but it's a nice confluence to have because my entry, if I wanted to be perfectly, extremely precise, would have been inside this little bit of a fair value gap. If I want to be more conservative, no problem into having at the order block. H1 order block, stop below the low, and just get the trade, get in the trade and uh, profit from it because I mean, it went higher, clap, clap. So here to here, by the way, I did not take this trade, equalize. Um, this went higher already and it broke down, so. Technically speaking, it's high resistance, uh, even though it's not the entire picture, but we have this old volume imbalance on the H1. You can see it also in here. And my exit, if I took this trade, would have easily been up here. So 1.7, high probability to me, because we are taking lows into an H1 order block with a fair value gap in a potentially bullish environment. Come on, that's good enough. And you can put size on this trade because we have a 24 pip stop. So it's fine. Absolutely fine to put size. It's not, the odds of you getting slipped is not that high. And to be honest, this up move was not as quick as I expected. It was decent, moved rather quickly. Now I wanna uh, show why I took a partial in here of 50%. And the reason uh, I already explained it in the group, but I wanna touch base on it again. It's because if you notice at the 830, this one moved higher and usually in news, you wanna see all assets that are considered risk on to go higher, to really push the dollar down. Um, but we didn't have that. As you can see in here, 830, the move was rather slow, moved up, stayed in the range and only then it started moving. But to bring uh, one specific point in here, it's if we analyze this one, we have NASDAQ going into the H4 imbalance, running this stop while this one does and then this one does. So ES is strong enough because it's failing to do what the others are doing, means relatively stronger. And on ES, 
you can see how after the displacement at 930, we broke structure aggressively, we came back in, bullish order block, but don't forget, this is wiki, so I'm more focused on the body, muse body, oh, this is okay, body, hits it beautifully, and at the same time this does this, DAO is running for stops. So external, internal. Why that happened? It's, uh, I don't want to say it's simple, but it's logical. At 9.30, the displacement higher. This one doesn't have a, a, a fair value gap, as you can see, after 9.30. This candle here created nothing. So given the fair value gap is missing, it's going to probably run for stops. This one has the fair value gap even in here, and it was relatively stronger eating at H4 a BC, so no need. And even before that, before all of this, you can see how this low, they went higher, lower, lower in here, and then lower again to confirm the buy on ES. Targeting for ES, uh, if you wanna have low hanging fruit approach, because we are range bound, and we are unsure where the market will move next. In my opinion, you take the range from the high to the low, which then then was like this, and you can easily sell uh, sell in here because it's past the 62, and it's likely to stop. In this case, it didn't, but you need targets. Without targets, I mean, uh, you don't know what you're aiming for, so you are missing all the time. Um, this in this case, I will not say I would have entered in here. Let's just say in here, uh, plus the spread of TCFT because most of us trade on TCFT. Stop at the below the low, targeting the upper portion in here. It's a nice 3.35. Um, if you want to be more conservative, you can see a fair value gap in here also residing. So the closure here or 50%, it's 2.8 almost. And this is pure because there is no commissions. So amazing, really, really good session. Finally, I'd say, I have yet to make the calculation on how much I made on Euro. I will say that on the group now and bye bye.